Upton Hill. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome to Wyoming. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Snow. In Tennessee. Why? Yes. You are here to talk about this week um, your new song or new single, rather, Southern Gentleman. Yes. Why did you pick that one? To first of all, to be on the record, and then why? Why was that the single? Um, you know, when I heard Southern Gentleman, it just like immediately put these images in my head of like all the books and um, movies and everything that I've seen based in the South and just how warm and rich and kind people, you know, people are here. I guess they're not necessarily rich. Let me go back to that. Warm and inviting and then they're <laughs> rich personalities. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But um, I'm, I grew up in Iowa, and, um, you know, we're Midwest. We're not really so Southern. Uh, we definitely have some of that same hospitality, but it's just not the same. And uh, I just heard that song, and I loved it immediately. Those images popped in my head, and I'm like, this is this got to be, this has to go on my album. And it was just a story you wanted to tell. Yeah, yeah, it was just, I mean, it was just a fun song. You know, my first single was Do Love Well, and it had a message to, to share for sure um, about putting love out there in the world and, and it just remembering to do everything that you do in life with love. And so I wanted the follow-up to be something a little less, you know, messagey um, and a little bit more just about having fun and celebrating um, good manners. <laughs> I like it. I was like, we're celebrating manners. Yes. <laughs> the first time I ever heard that. Um, but as I, as we, as we were sort of prepping for this chat, what I was telling you is that I want to talk about creative courage. Mm -hmm. You know, that idea of putting yourself, because that's essentially what you're doing, especially in something like Do Love Well, which you wrote, into the world. And go, hey, people, here's who I am. What do you think of that, right? Right. Um, when you had the EP ready and it's ready to go, what the, that, the day before release, like what, what, what's, what, what's that feel like? Like um, when you're, you're putting that work out there. There's a lot that goes through your head, really. Um, I mean, everything from the obvious of I hope people like it to did I you know, did I proof this and did I spell check and did I get the other songwriters' names right and are the copyrights correct? You know, just like those little details. Um, I'm really uh, specific when it comes to having good grammar and my written work especially. And so that gets really, honestly, that's one of my biggest fears is that I'm going to release something and, oh, I didn't put the email right. That's messed up. And then everybody's going to have my email wrong. So um, <laughs> talked a lot about that one, but yeah. So definitely, um, people are gonna like it. Is it packaged right? Does it is everything spelled right? Are they gonna like my picture? Did I should I've chosen something else? You know, as my my main shot. Are the colors right? I mean, we we talked a lot about colors and how that plays such a role in how people perceive your product and you know the packaging and is it gonna put off this you know set of people this group of people are they not gonna buy it just because it's pink right. and that there's so many elements that go into it and then at the end of the day you just have to go with your gut and um, you know yeah. statistics in some cases and um, consult your professional uh, uh, peers and then say go exactly. And the, the whole concept of the creative curve, so when you're being creative, that means being vulnerable automatically. Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable means being courageous. Yes. How do you handle that aspect of it? You know, I've always, as a singer, I've always um, thought that our, our instrument is us, you know guitarists and flute players and whatever of course they're putting their self out there too but their instrument is something that's actually kind of disconnected in a way so to me and this may not be how everybody else sees it but to me I've always felt like internally if somebody doesn't like my voice it's more a part of me that you know like then maybe if they don't like my guitar playing you're right it feels somewhat more personal I've come to terms with that and I'm okay with it because I know that not everybody's going to like my voice not everybody's going to like my message or my you know the music that I choose to go with it but um, it does feel very personal when it's something that is a part of you physically um, yeah and how did that because you said it's gotten easier in, in what way has gotten easier I think I've just, you know, gotten older and come to the realization that it's okay if somebody doesn't love it. It's okay. I will still sleep 
and <laughs> get up in the morning and be able to exist and keep making my music. Um, that means that there's a place for me with somebody else, you know, and somebody else is going to like it. And, and those people that, that don't care for my music, they like something else and hopefully they'll be touched by somebody else's. Maybe one of my, my friends is putting out, out an album and they'll love that. So um, it's, it's not something that I feel like, you know, hurts my soul or feeds my soul either way anymore necessarily. I love it if people get something out of it. But um, yeah, it's, it's not going to cause me to lose sleep, I guess, if they don't, if they don't love it. I'll just be like, oh, okay, well, maybe you love this and give them something else. So. And how do you filter that feedback? Because you can't take, as you already said, like you can't take everything in. Mm -hmm. You would go crazy. Um, you know, the YouTube commenters, you can't listen to everything. Right. But you still have to listen to constructive criticism, things that are going to make you better. Yes. So how do you decide? How do you decide what to ignore and what to listen to? Um, I mean, sometimes it's about quantity, but it's not necessarily about how many times somebody says they hate your stuff because there's there are haters, you know what I mean? And they're just going to hate everything you do. And so you kind of look at how they're presenting their message, and if somebody actually offers you some constructive criticism, it's usually from, you know, a good place and you can tell in their tone, in their message, in their presentation of how they give you the criticism um, and also just their background, you know, what experience do they have that um, that gives them not necessarily the right but that background and knowledge to offer the criticism and be warranted. Yeah, exactly. Because it's the, uh, one of the things that I see when I work with new artists that's the hardest is they are so eager Feedback, mm -hmm. they open themselves up to all of it. Yes. And it's li I literally just said, well, you know, I met this guy at a gas station who said I should do XYZ. And I was like, Why? Well, yeah. <laughs> Go, no. You know, dude in gas station? Yeah. That's not a credential. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really tough because mm -hmm. you want to improve, you want to learn, you want to go, okay, what, what do I do? How do I get better? Um, so that's really, is that something you. We're, we're advised on, like, hey, don't listen to this, listen to that, or is it, do you just have to learn it as you want? Um. You know, I've been singing since I was three, and not professionally, but um, <laughs> but here and there, and I did all the school stuff. And I think, you know, with being in choir and in band, and then in college, actually, I studied vocal music. You just learn to take criticism because it's part of your learning, you know, and you take lessons and you have a teacher who gives you um, instruction on how to get better and what, what you're doing well, but what you can improve upon. And so I think if you just open yourself up to and being surrounded by people that you trust and you admire um, who inspire you, then that is, that's exactly where you're going to get the best criticism and, and the best, um, even compliments then too, to build you up. Yeah, that are real compliments. Yes, yes. Not just the surface. Uh. We'll talk when this is on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is a slow business. It's slow but fast, all well, at the same time. Well, yeah, when stuff happens, it tends to happen yes, fast. Yes, yes. Overall, it's, you know, it's never fast enough when yes. you're waiting for something. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that need to stay patient? Um, I just, I mean, I'm constantly busy with touring and promoting and, you know, social media, keeping up with fans and friends. And um, then, of course, if I ever have any spare time to try to see my family <laughs> and friends, too. So but yeah. Oh, hey, how are you doing? Um, <laughs> you, I'm sorry. I've been kind of absent. But um, yeah, I mean, you just got to you take one day at a time and, and think about, you know, of course, there's the long term vision that you have and, and surround yourself with a team. I mean, that's something I'm really blessed with. Are, are people that have my best interest at heart and who have really good forethought because I'm much more about how do I get done today when I need to get done today and I'm great at that you know or even a week the short-term things I'm on it the long-term strategic you know I can I can see it but it's not something that I'm as good at planning out so my husband's phenomenal at that, and I just got, I know, we balance each other so well. I find out every day how lucky I am. The, and I'm looking for something specific here. Oh. Uh, no names, <laughs> situation of 
a time when the you didn't stay patient, oh, yeah. or when yeah. you made a decision that later on you're like, yeah, uh, that was not the right thing. To do. Oh. Um, and and what was it that, that put you in that situation? Right. Yeah. What character trait of yours was it that put you in that situation? Hmm. Let me rack my brain a little bit for a sec on that one. <sighs> That's a hard question. It is. And it's been things like. I've heard people, not just here, but in coaching <laughs> sessions, you know, people have said things like, I picked the wrong man. Yeah. Um, I listened to yeah. a label yeah. on what I needed, mm-hmm. and I didn't feel comfortable on um, it. Um, I, I didn't stay patient, so I released a song, tomorrow, and then two months later, I wrote one of the better songs, <laughs> and I should have waited. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Because everybody has something, and it tends to be, uh, what I'm interested in is, you know, what got you into what made you make a decision that you later on realized uh, yeah perhaps that was the right thing hmm I guess I have been pretty calculated because this is a hard thing for me to answer is it weird that I don't rec- I mean like no it's not at all um, because it can be if you are if you have that right team around you uh huh and you say you know, I'm the short term person yeah and they're the long term people yeah it could be that they have stopped you <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have this great idea. Or but yeah, no. do you have something like that, like something you brought that got shot? A out? haircut? <laughs> <laughs> Image change. I mean, I do. I get. I get a little impatient. Honestly, I don't love to do my own hair and makeup, and I don't think it's really super fun. I love to look glamorous, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> Can somebody else please just follow me around and do my hair and makeup? But I get impatient with my look and like, oh, can I just, I want to look like this. Can I do retro all the time, you know? And um, my team, yeah, they, they keep me grounded on those to- choices. And now let's look ahead at when you're releasing these songs and when we're going to be wrapped up with this song promotion or this album promotion then we can kind of change the hairstyle or or whatever it is so um and subtly and keep in mind you know that you probably my image is not going to be a shapeshifter so i don't want to always you know some people it is you know and that's awesome but i guess overall mine is not so i yeah i guess that would be my my impatient thing would just be like can i just chop all my hair off please today and yeah, because that's an, you know, every time you go to a radio station, you look completely different and you don't recognize you anymore. Like, that's, right. I know what your team is, but I also understand your point. Yeah, so yeah, like, it's well, like, yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. They change their hair, you know, they change their style of clothing. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. What still feels, because you're, you're into this for a little bit now, mm-hmm. um, what still feels the most kind of vulnerable um, about the whole, like, being a singer? Yeah. Um, honestly, songwriting is the most vulnerable for me. I, I, I know I can open myself up even more in the future, but I'm going to have to really open myself up more. Um, <laughs> literally, it's, um, I always feel like I have kind of this roadblock about my, my lyrics. I love words. I love writing, but I... I've, I'm afraid of cliches, but then at the same time, I'm like, well, a cliche sometimes is good. It, that's the reason it's a cliche because you, you can't say it any better than that. So, um, it's it's putting those words to music and and open it and opening it up for other people to listen and thinking, okay, it's gonna hurt a little bit if they don't like my words because again, that's a very personal thing that comes out of right. you. So that's and that's the work. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you're like, here's my heart and soul. Yeah. <laughs> Please critique it. Right. Really I don't feel shallow, but if somebody says, you know, it's a shallow song, you're like, well, I didn't mean it shallow. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm a shallow person. So that's that kind of hurts a little bit. That's but. the difference. And I work on that a lot. They, they haven't told you you're a shallow person. Right. They told right. You that's a shallow yeah. Person. <laughs> you're the one who turned it into. Right. It's oh all about God, you, think, <laughs> you think this is a me. No, but that's, we all do that. Like, yes. It's not a, like you did this. I did this. We do that. Uh-huh. If you identify with your work, when somebody then critiques that work, you take it on yourself. Everybody yes. Does that. Yeah. But that's really tough to um, to, to unlearn mm-hmm. doing that. That's like years of work. Right yeah. Now, to get yeah. Together. Well, we'll end on something much lighter. <laughs>
after therapy. <laughs> I didn't bring my tissues. He's like, oh, I had my dog. <laughs> a record that was the soundtrack of your life so far, but songs that were sort of with you when you were growing up and in high school and college, what songs are on that record? Oh gosh, you know, a lot of strong female singers, for sure. Um, my dad played such a huge role in in my, my musical upbringing. My, my mom and dad both, actually. He was in bands and things, like I mentioned. And so he listened to, my first concert I went to was Joan Jett. And um, we loved Pat Benatar and Madonna and Cyndi Lauper. So these really strong female singers. Um, middle school, I became obsessed, and it's kind of still stu stuck with me today, Jewel. Um, I love pretty much everything she does and if talk about vulnerable songwriting. Oh my gosh. Yes, for sure. I love I just love Jewel. Um, uh, Joni Mitchell, any folk music, um, stuff with a message, stuff that, you know, the lyrics really mean something. Um, I really, really love that. So and then my brother, I was just thinking about this this morning. My brother was in high school during um, the nineties and so he just listened to all the alternative and grunge music and so I, whenever, you know, Nirvana or Pearl Jam, you know, Weezer comes on, I just love it. Buddy Holly is definitely in my life soundtrack as far as Weezer's song, <laughs> Buddy Holly. It'll just, like, play in my head sometimes. I'm walking down the street, and I'm like, Wee, ooh, I look just like Buddy Holly. I'm like, why am I thinking of this right now? But, so that'd be there. <laughs> That's on the record. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.